us let us begin. Uh, we are talking about the Mishnah on Daf Lamed Hey Amut Sheni uh, Esra Kagozo. Okay, we discussed the Lulav, we discussed Hadassim, and now we're discussing uh, uh, Aravis, we discussed yesterday, and now we're discussing Esrog. I will point out to you that the word Esrog is not a Hebrew word. Actually, Esrog is an Arabic word. And we, we, we think it's a Hebrew word, but nowhere in the Tanakh you'll find the word Esrog. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the, Talm, it's in the Targum Unculus. The real, um, the, now your question is, what was the name of the fruit that, that was originally, the, according to Ramban, the name of the fruit was Hadar, Hadar. That's the name of the fruit, pre eats Hadar, uh, the fruit of, uh, of the tree, the Hadar tree or whatever. So that, but the Arabic name took a hold. Esrik Hagozo, Esrik that was stolen, of course, is not kosher. Why? Because it has to be yours. If it's dried, Possible, it is it is possible because if you can't squeeze it and there's no there's no um, liquid inside of it, like if you leave an esrig over a you know a couple of months in your in a bowl, it will dry out. So then it's possible. It's not hodder. Shell ashera. If we um, if you have it, it's from an ashera tree and a bayezara tree. So we shall ir hanidachas, or it's from a city that's supposed to be burnt, burnt down because everybody in the city worshipped Avaidazara. So this is supposed to be a bombed out city. So if you took an esrik from that city or from an Avaidazara tree, it's almost, we consider it as if it's burnt and it's not, doesn't have the shiur. So it's possible, this is possible. Now the Mishnah introduces us things that are unique to an esrik. Sher orla. Let's say you take, you pick off from an esrik tree that is orla. Orla is that the, the first three years of a fruit tree, you're not allowed to benefit from that fruit tree. So if this esrit comes from, if this esrit comes from an orla tree, so then it's possible. It's it's possible because the Torah says ulkachtem lochem, and the Torah's stress is that in order for an esrit to be kosher, you have to be able to eat the esrit, and an orla is not permissible to eat. So therefore, it's possible. Shel truma tmeya. If you have an orla, uh, if you have an esrit that's from a koyin has an esrit, that was truma. But it was it was Tame. So then possible, it's also possible because the coin can't eat the truma. It can't eat it. And again, an esrig that you're not allowed to eat is possible to use for the Dalad Minim. Okay, even though Truma Tamea, a coin could actually use it as firewood, but he can't eat it. That's the key. Shell Truma Tahira, if it's if it's tar, uh, if it's Truma Tahira, then Lo Yito, the coin shouldn't use it at all. But if he used it for his dollar medium, it's kosher. It's kosher. So we'll see why that is so. Why why you should not use truma tahara. Shell demai. Now remember, you have to take off truma samaisris off the fruits, right? So if it's if you didn't take off any truma samaisris from that from that pile of esrix, then certainly you can't use them because it's tevel. But let's say it's shell demai. It it actually was sold to you by an Amaretz. And the halach is by an Amaretz, we, there's a Dindra Bonan that we don't trust him that he took off Trumas, we took, take off Maestris. He didn't take off Maestris. We think he didn't take off Maestris. Beishamai says, Beishamai, it's possible because this, this, this fruit has a din like regular table and you, because you can't eat it, that's why it's possible. Well, Beishila Machshirin, Beishila say it's kosher, you're allowed to use it. And the reason is because technically, the Mai was permitted for poor people. Poor people and, and, and people from the army were permitted, they had a dispensation that if they bought uh, fruits from Amaretz, they don't have to, they don't have to be, be strict and take off Maestris again. They can trust if the Amaretz says, I took off Maestris, trust me, they can trust him. So therefore, it's potentially can be eaten by somebody. And therefore, Beis Hillel says, it, this is a kosher asterisk. Shall Maestris Shani be Yerushalayim? A Maishashani in Yerushalayim, you have an Esrig of Maishashani in Jerusalem. So you just could eat the Esrig in Jerusalem. Loyito. Nevertheless, the Mishnah says don't take it. The Imnatal, kosher. But if you did take it, it's kosher. So we'll see more about that in the Gemara. What, what, why Lechatchil you shouldn't take it. And if it's the you could take it. Now the Mishnah says common things. Also, Chazazus Arubai. If it grew a, a, like a blister on most of the, the fruit. 
So let's see a picture. Let's say, okay, we don't have a, I'll show you a picture over here. Um, here, here you have a picture. You have, this is the picture off to the right. So here, right over here where my arrow is, you have these like, it looks like the fruit started to spoil and also means it grew, uh, it grew like a bump. That's also, it has to have a bump to it, like a spoilage bump to it. So then the Mishnah says, the Mishnah says, if most of the esrik has this, uh, this blister on it, then it's going to be puzzle. Now, don't confuse this. What the, everybody, if you go into Israel, if you go buy a, a lulav and a shreigim, uh, everybody talks about the blot fleck, that, that the leaf, it looks like there was a burnt leaf on the esrog. That's not a chazazis because that's not a, a bump on the esrog. It just looks black. It's from normal growth of the esrog. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a chumr to have it totally clean, but that black spot is not, that is not the chazazis that we're talking about. Here we're talking about it like spoiled a little bit on most of the esrog. Then the Mishnah, so then it'll be possible. Nitla pit mosoi. If the pitim fell off. Now, what is the pitim? Pitim is not what you think is the pitim. Pitim is the stick coming out of the of the of the esrig, the top of the esrig, as you see in the picture. And and the reason why it would be possible if this fell off is because there's a hole in between. There's a hole. When you when it falls off, it takes a piece of the esrig with it. And therefore, the Torah says you have to take a complete esrig, and this is a missing esrig. So therefore, this esrig would be would be invalid. Okay, but others say that the pitim is actually even the flower that's called the shashanta, the flower, the bud, that bump on top. Even if that is missing, it could possible an esrik. So that's why some people are 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 makbid to make sure that that bump stays intact at least for the first day of sukkus. Uh, yet, if you buy an esrik that does not have any pit, any pitim to it, that's also okay because. It, it grew that way. That's the natural growth. In fact, some people are looking just for an esrik like that because it's more likely that it's a complete esrik. Niklaf, let's say you peel the, the thin uh, membrane of, off the esrik a little bit. That's that, not, that maybe you took off some of the color off the esrik. Nizdak, or if it got a crack in the esrik. So nizdak would be something like this, like a whole crack. And this probably is missing something. You, you, let, let's say you put a knife and it slid it like that. So then it would be possible. Obviously, it would be possible. Nikaf, if you made a, a hole in it, the chaser kolshu, and it's missing some part of the esrig. You, you drilled something into the esrig, and now you can see an indentation and probably a piece missing. So then all this is possible because it's not whole. Also, chazaz is but let's say this rotting went only on a little part of the esrit, a noital uktsai, or the other part, the ukits, the, the back part of the esrit fell off, which is this part, the, the stem, I, I guess you call it, the, the, that part of the esrit fell off, the back. So then it's going to be kosher. Nita v'leichosu kosher. If it got a hole and it's not missing anything, then it's kosher. If it got a hole, but let's say you stuck a pin in there, and nothing, and you took out the pin in, of the esrig, you stuck it a little bit, that doesn't possible the esrig because the esrig is not really missing anything. So therefore, uh, it's kosher. The esrig will be kosher. Now the Mishnah says, esrig hakushi. Esrig hakushi is an esrig that comes from the land of Kush, and it's black. Now, this, the Mishnah says it's possible. Now here, I, I, we discussed this, I think I we discussed in the Sheldon, is that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And in times of the Mishnah, they never saw a black esrik. And therefore, the Mishnah says it's possible because they didn't, they never saw it. But if, uh, so it was uncommon, that's not considered harder. But now, uh, color is not as important because you get all different types of colors of esrik. So an esrik hakushi would be kosher. It's just in the time of the Mishnah, the black was not beautiful and therefore it was possible. But I think the green esrik was also possible then, right? Ah, a so green that, esrug. Well, the green esrik was was possible for a different reason that we're going to learn right now in the Mishnah. Uh, okay. We're going to learn right now because by Yarek Kakarti, let's say you have a green esrig like, uh, like a scallion. So Rab Meir, Machsh, Rab Meir says it's kosher. Now, the reason why Rab Meir says it's kosher because just because it's green doesn't mean that it didn't complete, the, it's not a complete fruit. You see, Rab Yehuda says it's poisel because the fact that it's green, it shows that the fruit did not ripen and therefore it's not even a fruit. That's why it's possible.
But the, again, our green esrogim would turn yellow. It's like the banana that would eventually turn yellow. It's not that it's not ripe. It could just finish off its process outside. Um, again, the same idea. Sheer esrog hakotem. What is the smallest size of an esrog? So Rameir Oimer, Rameir says, egois. you take a walnut. Because if it's smaller than a walnut, then you know it's not the fruit did not complete. So it's not a complete fruit. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Kabea. It has to be the size of an egg. It's the size of an egg, then you know it completed. Um, Ubagadal. But how what's the largest an egg an Ezra could be? So Rabbi Yehuda says, You have to be able to hold two in one hand. So let's see if we can have a, a picture of that here. Um, you have to be able to hold here two of them. Here's the picture, as you see in the bottom of the page over here. Uh, the picture is that you have to be able to hold two in one hand. All right. That's only, uh, uh, and, and the small one again is like an egg or a walnut or, or an egg. Rabbi Huda says an egg. And Rabbi Huda also says you have to be able to hold two esrogim in one hand. That's the, the largest side. Rabbi Huda. And the reason is because often you're switching, <coughs> you're switching hands. And Rabbi Huda was afraid if, if you take a too large of an esrog, when you switch the lulav, if you held the lulav in the, in the left hand, you want to switch it over to the right hand and the esrog to, from the right hand to the left hand, you may drop the esrog and causing it to lose a piece of the esrog. So he, he gave you a shear, uh, an, a maximum shear. Rabbi Yaisi, Aimer, Rabbi Yaisi says, Afila echa yadav. You, a, 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 an esrog could be so large that you could only hold one with two hands. And now, how's, so again, we saw this before. We learned before that you have to take all four minim, but doesn't mean that you have to take all four at the same time. Uh, here we see that Rabbi Yaisi says, if you have an esrog that you could only hold with two hands, it's so large, Use that esrig and then pick up the lulav and hadassim and aravis this later. But he, there's no maximum share. So now we begin the Gemara. Tanra Abonam. Now, how do we know it's an esrig? Would you say it's an Allah Alamaisu Messinai? The Ramban and Chumash says not so. Uh, but Ramban and Chumash says pre eats hadar, that it's called a fruit tree and it's hadar. Rab, Rabban says he thinks that the word hadar means the word esrig, citron. It sounds even like the word citron which is what an esrog is. But the Gemara has another drasha. Since it doesn't say pre ha the fruit of the tree, it says pre eats a fruit tree. Eats, it's the, the, the tree, shatam eitsu upiria shava, that the, the bark, the, the tree itself, and the fruit of the tree taste the same. In other words, not that, and that's really, you don't really, the interesting thing about an esrog, it's not so edible. Uh, it's basically used, you cook it up, and make it a, sh- a sugary dip or something like that. But the, when we speak of the, the taste, tastes the same as the bark, we're talking about the white flesh, the white part inside, the grind, the rind inside, the white part, that tastes like the bark. It has like a sharp taste to it. So there's only one fruit that has that quality that the, 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 the wood of the tree and the flesh of the, not the flesh, the rind of the fruit tastes the same. That have the That is the proof that was that the Torah meant an esrik. So the Gemara says the aim of pilpalin. Let us say that it means pepper. Now pepper would be something like this, uh, uh, right over here. Do you see this on the this picture? Red pepper or green pepper? Small little peppers. Now how do you know peppers taste the same? The, the tree tastes the same. Okay, we learned in the Bray. So how you mayor 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 used to say The Torah says that orla. When you plant the tree, don't eat the, f- the fruit of the first three years. Any adaya eats machal. The Torah says if you plant a tree machal and ate a, f- a, tr- a tree that you can eat the fruit, um, don't eat the fruit for the first three years. So the Gemara asks, Ma tamad loyme eats machal. Why do you have to tell me that the, a- the eats is a, f- is a food? I mean, obviously, uh, obviously we're dealing with fruit trees. So you don't even have to tell me that. So the, the, it's marba, it includes not only apples and oranges and all different types of fruits for Arla, but even peppers, which is a low fruit, right? Eight, and, but the pepper is eight shatam, eight superior shava. The pepper, the wood of the tree and the fruit of the tree taste the same. And therefore I would have thought without this posit that a pepper, there's no din Arla on a pepper because it doesn't look like a regular tree. It's a low bush. Kamash Mulam, that even pepper have a din orla. Have a So the, it must be that pilpalin is included in the mitzvah of, in the iser, and the prohibition of orla, peppers. 
to teach you that pilpinin are obligated to keep the din of Allah. Peppers are very common in Eretz Yisrael, and there's nothing missing in Eretz Yisrael. So, so ends the kasha. So how do you know that that the reason why you chose that it meant the asterisk because asterisk has this unique quality of that the bark tastes like the fruit. But I, the Gemara just proved from another brisa that there's another uh, there's another fruit, so to speak, that tastes the same. Pepper, pilpalin, right? Pepper, the bark of the tree tastes the same as the fruit. So why don't we choose pepper? So the Gemara says, logically, it wouldn't make sense that the Torah meant to take, take pepper because it's impossible to take pepper. Hey, how should you take pepper? Should you take one pepper? You can't take, you, you, no one can see you taking it because you could put, you could stuff one pepper and close your hand. Nobody knows you're holding anything. Should you, should you take two or three peppers? So it looks like you're holding something. The Torah tells you took only one fruit, not, not, Two or three. Hilkach after so therefore it's impossible that the Torah meant that it's the pepper tree. Okay, fine. So now we know that it's the Esrik tree because it says Pei eats Hadar. Rabbi Oime, Rabbi says, I have another uh proof that it's the it's the Esrik tree. Al Tikri Hadar, don't call it read it Hadar, El Hadir. It's like an animal pen. So, my dear Zed, if you have an animal pen with a whole bunch of animals, yesh there are large animals, ukatanim, small animals, tmimim, whole animals, ubalimumin, and blemished animals, right? The pen has all sorts of mixtures of animals. Hochinami, in, in the esrog tree, yesh boy gedolim ukatanim, you have large esrogs, small esrogs, tmimim, whole esrogs, ubalimumin, and, and, and blemished esrogs. So therefore, it must be the Esrug tree. So the Gemara jumps on this and says, what do you mean? Take any fruit tree. They have big fruits, the small fruits, big one, uh, whole ones, and, and blemished ones. Ah, yeah, no. The unique thing about an Esrug tree is that the fruit stays on the tree for quite a long period of time. It doesn't fall off right away. So you could have a small fruit coming and you still have the large fruit still on the tree as you can probably see in, in, th in this picture. Let me show you, uh, hold on. Let me just back it up a little bit. Yeah, you see here, you're gonna have a tree, an esteric tree, you don't pick it every year. So you could have a small one coming out a small esrog coming out, and the large one is still there. So that's why it's like an animal pen. You have small esrogs and large esrogs on the same tree. That only is unique to an esrog tree, not by any other type of fruit. Rabbi Bo, Oma, Rabbi Bo says, esrog is al-tikri hadar el-hadar. It lives there. It's like a squatter. Dava shadar ba'ilana mishana mishana. The fruit stays on the tree from year to year. So that's the uniqueness about an esrog. Same idea. That it doesn't, you don't have to pick it every year, but you can have a, an esrog stay on its tree for for a couple of years, and 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 and, and everything will be okay. Then azayayma al tikri hadar el idur. The word hadar means idur. Shekain beloshin yavani. If you the language of Greek, karum lemayim idur. The water is called idur. So, so not that Greek. The Torah is Greek, but you see in Greek a common word is idur which probably is a break off from the original Hebrew language, which means water. The Ezehi Shagodala Kolmaya, where is a fruit tree that can grow on any type of water? Heavy Oim is an esrog. That's unique to an esrog that it doesn't need, um, it could grow on rainwater, it could grow on irrigation water, and it grows on any type of water is pretty good to feed an esrog. So we had a bunch of different reasons to prove Ramazim to prove that the, the esrog was the Torah, when the Torah said pre Hada, it was referring to the esrog, even though it's not so clear in the Torah. Like I said, the Ramban said the word Hadar is the noun to mean esrog. What if the esrog is from a Avaydazara tree? Why is it possible? Since you're going to burn it, it's as though you don't have the sheer esrog anymore. You look at it as powder. Vishal Arla Apostle. Now, why is Arla Apostle? Oh, so my time up. So the Gemara originally thought, why would an Arla Esrug be Apostle? Pligi Barachiyah Barav and Rabasi. Chad Omar once said, the reason why an, an Esrug of Arla is Apostle, because you can't eat it. 
The Chadama once said, because it's not yours, because it's, Arla is also bahana. You can't benefit from Arla. The, at best, you have to burn it and throw it out like chametz. So therefore, it's not your money. And Torah says, Lekachtim, you have to own it. So, Kusal Kedaitach, the one we think, Man de boy Heter Chila, the one that's emphasized that the key word is that Esrik has to be edible to eat, that you're permitted to eat it. Loi boy din It doesn't require that it belong to you. Because there's some things that are like hegdish, like uh, an esrig of Meiser Shani, which is actually, you can eat it, but it's really not yours because it has a Din Kedusha on it, according to Rab Meir. So that's also good. The main thing is that for an esrig to be kosher, it has to be heter achila. You have to be able to eat it. That's one opinion. The one that says that it's it has to be yours, he does not require you to be able to eat it. Uh, as long as it's your, it's yours, and it's you have the ownership on it. That is enough to to uh, to make an esrik kosher. So the Gemara asks: Now we learned in a Mishnah, shall truma tamea psula. The coin has a, a an esrik that's from truma tamea. It is invalid. Now bishlam l'man di amofi shein ba heta chila shapir. According to the opinion that the reason why the esrik is no good is because he can't eat it. There's no heter achila shapir. It's very good to understand why Tuma Tameya is possible because it's Tame Truma and the client can't eat it. It's not your money, right? Am I? Why can't they be Yoitza with Truma Tameya? Why can't the client use Truma Tameya as his esrik? It's his money. Although he can't eat it, he's allowed to use it for firewood under, his, under what he's cooking. In other words, the uniqueness about Truma Tameya is albeit you can't eat it, but you're allowed to benefit from it. So why does the Mishnah say Truma Tameya is possible? According to the opinion that uh, that the, the main thing is Din Mamain, that it has to, you have to own it. Ella, the truth is, the Gemara retracts. The main point is that you have to be able to eat it. That decides if an Esrug is kosher. That's for sure. Keep Pligi, but when is their argument? Bidin moment. Do you have to own it as well? Mar Savar, Heter Achila Beidim, Din Momen Loibin. One holds that all you have to, to make an extra kosher, you have to be have the ability to eat it, but you don't have to be call it your money. Umar Savar, Din Momen Nami Beidim. The other opinion holds that it has to be your ownership. So you have to have two points. Number one, you have to be able to eat it. And it has to be your something that you can own. So the Gemara says, my benayu, what would be the difference between them? I'll give you an example. Ike benayu, my sesheni, should be Rishlaim, alibid rameya. My sesheni, when you eat those fruits in your Rishlaim, according to Rameya, you're allowed to eat the refu- fruits, but the Torah calls it holy fruits, kaidish fruits. And therefore, Rameya was of the opinion that these fruits are not really yours. So if you wanted to take this fruit of my sesheni, and betroth the woman, say, my wife, here's a Maishasheni. It doesn't work because it's not your, it's not yours. It's like Hashem gave you a gift to eat, like, like, like a carbon, and therefore it's not yours, but you're permitted to eat it. So according to the opinion that uh, it, there's no heterachila, Maishasheni, you're permitted to eat, and therefore you could use Maishasheni for your esrog. But Laman the Amal of Yishayimba the Milman, he, according to the opinion that you also have to own it, ah, uh, my Sushaini, Maman Gavayahu. Let us, my Sushaini is, uh, belongs to Hashem. And therefore, according to that opinion, Aliba de Ramea, you wouldn't be allowed to use an esrig of my Sushaini. So we had a Machlaikis who said what? Um, it was Machlaikis Rab Chia, Bar Oven, and Rab Asi, what the opinions are. The reason why Arla is possible is it because there's no heter achila or it's not your money because Arla has both qualities to it. Arla is not yours because you have to burn it. So the Gemara says, This time I'll prove to you the Rab Asi the Amal Vish Ain Mamin. Rab Asi was the one that added that it, it, the main the, that another point is that you have to own it. The Amar Rab Asi, Rab Asi said, Esrik shall my Shusaini, the Divrea Mayor, ain't all the Yaitz de Chavasa beyond of here. Rab Asi said that according to Rab Mayor, my Shusaini. A person would not be Yoitza his esrig with that. Oh, so Rabbi Asi said, so it must be Rabbi Asi holds that for an esrig to be kosher, it has to be what? It has to be your esrig. 
So therefore, the Dirich Chacham, no other Yitzchak Dechol was beyond. According to Chachamim, that Ma'aseh Sheni is not your money; is is your money. According to Chachamim, uh, Ma'aseh Sheni has no kedusha to it, so you would be Yitzchak your Chiyav Esrit. To Stein, that's a proof that Rabasi was of the opinion. The Rabasi is of the opinion that uh, Esrit to be kosher needs two parts to it. One, you have to be able to eat it, and number two, you have to own it. That's the another key factor. Do you have to own it totally, or do you have? Can you be a partner in it? You could be no. You're capable of owning it, it but it's not Hegdish's money. It doesn't. Like, ah, it, so Hegdish. it's an allowable thing to that. If I wanted to own it, right. No, well, you, you have to own it the first day, right? You have to own it. Now, it's not clear what the Torah meant, you have to own it. So right. the first thing we say, step one, is that you have to be able to eat it. It can't be like truma tamea that you're not allowed to eat. Step two is an opinion of Rabasi that not only you have to be permitted to eat it, you have to be own it. So if it's Maisa Shani, according to a mayor, which has a kedusha to it, so it's not yours. Rabbi Sushani has a kedusha to it. It's right. not yours. Right. So it wouldn't be Yaitza. So Lachatchila, you couldn't own it because it's hectic. But the thing is, I'm asking is, I think we learned somewhere that there were times that people could not afford or they couldn't. There's only one esrog in the whole town. And they all right. chipped in like a pruta to, to own the esrog. And it was allowable. I think the Chof, it was the Chofetz Chaim said it was right. okay. Would that be okay? Yeah. If you just part, like a pesa, like a korban pesach, you were part of a group. Right, you were part of a group. You, you had ownership in it. That's true. Right. right. But not Shani is never your personal money. No, that's that's you, you can't you can't you can't give it to a woman and say you be my wife. Here's my Maishu right. Shani. That wouldn't work right. according to our mayor. Yes. Goof yes. what we learned. Amar Abasi Esrik Shem Maishu Shani Ledivra Mayor. According to our mayor, it's not your money. Ain't other Yaitze Dechavas Biyantiv. You won't be Yaitze using it as an Esrik. Ledivra Chachamim Other Yaitze Dechavas Biyantiv. Matza. Matzah of Maishasheni, the Dira Mayor, Eno de Mirti Chavas of Pesach. Matzah of Maishasheni wouldn't work either. Now the Gemara is going to ask a question on that because it's not your matzah. The Dira Chachamim, Adam Yerti de Chavas of Pesach. Isa shall Maishasheni, a dough of Maishasheni, right? So do you have to give off a piece of that dough as chala for the coin? The Dira Mayor, it's not yours, it belongs to Hashem. So it's patur min You don't have to give anything part of it that dough to the coin. The divrei chachamim chayavis mechala. It has to, it's chayav in chala. Now, so now we see from there that you have to own it. According to a mayor, you're not yoitza uh, a esro that's not yours, a matzah that's not yours, and a and a, a in a dough that's not yours is pata from chala. So maskev lara papa bishlama isa. I understand isa. If it's not yours. You don't have to give off chala. Ksiv, reishis, arisa, seichem. It has to, you have to own the dough. And if, let's say it's a goy's dough or it's a hegdish dough, then you don't have to give off chala. Esrug nami, esrug has to belong to you. Ksiv lechem. You have to have ownership on it. Mishal lechem. It has to belong to you. You have to own it. Ela matzah, mi ksiv matzaschem. Does the Torah say that you have to own the matzah? What is the Torah says that uh, that you have to own the matzah, that you're telling me that if it's it's my sashemi matzah, you're not yoitzah? According to a mayor, Omer Abba, Omer Shmuel, Vitaim Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shlomia, Asi Lechem Lechem. We have Exayu Shava, Ksiv Hocha Lechem Oini. When the Torah describes matzah, it calls it the poor man's bread. Uksiv Hasam. We go down the second page, Lamed Bavam Beis, Vahoya Baach Lechem Min Lechem Min Haaretz. When you eat food, when you eat the bread from the ground, right? The Torah says that t- talks about chala. So it lechem. So we have a gzeir shava. Malhalan mishalechem v'loisha ma'isa, just like just like the 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 chala is yours, and 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 it has to belong to you, and you can't use ma'isa sheni. I've come mishalechem v'loisha ma'isa, and also so also it has to be yours, and you can't by matzah it could has to it has to be yours and not ma'isa sheni. Two more points. Well, then we'll stop. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's do a little bit further down the page. Lema masayale. Let us prove. That 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 they all lump together, chala matzah and chala matzah and 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 esrog are all the same thing, because we learned isa shemaisa sheni petur min chala de remeya and isa of chala is isa a dough of maisa sheni is this they don't have to you don't have to take off chala, the chachamim are mechayev es bechala, so the gemara says leim emsayle isn't that a proof that 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 um. Maisa Shani, Maisa Shani is potter from Chala because you have to own it. So the Gemara says, he, he, that's exactly, what do you need? That's not a proof. That's exactly what he's saying. Isa shall Maisa Shani, Piturim and Chala. So the Gemara wants to say, since Ramea says, 
by a dough, it's potter from chala. Nami pligi. So he would argue also by matzah, and he would argue also by he would argue also by uh, um, matzah, and he would argue also uh, by esro. Oy Dilma, or maybe no. Rameir was strict that you have to own it. it was only strict by by dechala. Shani Isa, Domar Akra, Arisu Sechem, Arisu Sechem, Trezimna. By dough of chala, since it says it has to your dough, your dough twice. So then Rabbi Meir was very strict that you have to own the dough in order to be chayav chala. But by let's say Esra, the only Torah says it one time. So maybe Rabbi Meir wasn't so strict that you have to actually own it. Maybe Rabbi Meir would agree that you could be yotzer with a, with a Esra that you don't actually own. It's only that you're permitted to eat. So therefore, it's not such a clear proof that Ramea would hold by an esrog of Maishasheni that you can't yoytza. Anyway, so truma tmeya psula, the, the, the truma tmeya is pasul. You can't use truma tmeya as your esrog. Why? Simple. The less by heter chila, you can't eat it. Vishal truma tahoira la yital, but you should not take a truma tahoira. Why? Why can't they take use truma tahoira? So pligi ba rabami rabasi. Rabami Rabasi had an argument. Why shouldn't I take Truma Tahira? A coin could eat Truma Tahira. So, Chad Amav Mesha Machshira, because, because you are going to, because like today, you put the esrog in the lulav in the water, right? You put it near water, and then you're making the esrog susceptible to Tuma. And you making by making the esrog susceptible to Tuma by water coming on it, by water coming on it, Therefore, therefore, the Torah says you have to make sure that uh, truma does not become tame, and therefore uh, that's why they prohibited you lechatchila for use truma to hira. You're not allowed to take the chadam of nation of sida. And others say because because the esrog by, by being used all through sukkis, you're actually making the esrog dirty, and that's not respectful for truma to hira. That's why truma to hira lechatchila don't use it as your arba minim. My benayu, what would be the difference between these two opinions? Kegain shukara la shame puts me kli pasa chitzaina. If you called a truma, but accept the outer shell, you said the outer shell should be mine, but the inner part of the esrog should be truma. So lemand yom ab neishem achshira ika lemand according to the opinion that the reason why you don't use a truma esrog because it, you're making it susceptible for truma by bringing it in contact with water. So then you still have the same problem, even though the even though the outside of the esrog is not yours, uh, is yours, but at the end of the day, this inside is belongs to truma and can become susceptible to tuma. The man of sida, but according to the opinion that it becomes lost, that you're causing it to become dirty, Lakey, you don't have that problem because the outer part of the esrog was yours. You only made the inner part of the esrog truma. That wouldn't be a problem. One last piece, and then we'll stop. The not al kashera. If you took the esrog. If you took the esrig of truma, it would be kosher. Bidiyevit, it would be kosher. According to the opinion that the reason why think an esrig could be possible because you can't eat it, but truma tahora is good. You can eat it. And let me point out to you, even if you're not a koyin, potentially you could give it to a koyin. You could give it to your grandson who's a koyin. So therefore, it has a possibility to be eaten. So if you have this truma in your possession, you own it. Let's say you bought it off a coin or something like that. So then you, you, you could use it as your esrog because potentially you can give it away to somebody to eat. But according to the opinion of the Mount Yom of the Shein Ba Dim Yom, according to the opinion that holds that the re, what, what could pass on esrog is if you have no ownership in it, here you wouldn't have that problem. Hare Yesh Ba Din Maman. It has a, a possibility of you own it. You could own truma. So therefore, there's no problem, the Gemara concludes, using truma tahora as an esrog, but albeit b'diyevin, not l'chatchila. I will leave you with this Rashi. Rashi never uses uh, harsh words, but Rashi says, how, is, how are you allowed to eat truma, a Yisrael? So Rashi says a Yisrael can give it away. But Rashi says, don't think of a pidyin ain't law. You can't redeem truma and take off the kedusha off the truma that it could be eaten by Yisrael, like you could do by Maishasheni. You could transfer the kedusha off Maishasheni by transferring it onto money. Truma cannot be transferred over money so that you can eat it. 
And Rashi ends us, well, Oima Cain, whoever says something like that, Russia who? He's, an, he's a Russia. Apparently, there must have been like Maskilim in the time of Rashi, who was saying that Truma can also be transferred onto money. And Rashi uses such a strong word in, in this, on this daf that if you say such a thing, you're a Russia. So you can't redeem it. You can't redeem it, but it, it still has. Not he- you can, but you can't redeem Truma. Truma, Truma but it still has Heterachila Lukoyin. And even right. if you're a Jew that owns a Truma, Rashi says you can give it to your Ben Bita Kayin. If your daughter married a Kayin, right, of course. Yeah, yeah so then yeah. you can give it. So therefore, it has a yeah. Achila. Okay, we'll stop here. Okay. I'm wondering, Baruch, if the the, uh, the Pasuk Ulukachtem Lachem, it said Lachem, not Lacha, right? That's the Pasuk. Lachem, you are, you are each one of you. Right. So, um, so I was wondering if Lachem, you could think of that maybe then again, you could use it as a group and be like, just contribute to it, not be yours right. totally. Right. It's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. We'll, I think we'll learn about that. If everybody could own, share a partnership, and it doesn't totally mm-hmm. have to belong to you. Okay. But, but certainly you can't borrow an Esrik. That's for sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Very good. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, Baruch.